much more will have to be done to realize the full potential of our economies. For our economy to blossom, we have to invest in small and medium scale pro producers, especially mobilize them to adopt a business-like attitude to production and view their activities as commercial ones that can substantially increase their earnings and that of the entire community and also improve their livelihoods as a community. Ochimboya Conservancy is a special case. It's one of the smallest conservancies in the country. It's got uh, about 342 people. It's about eight settlements in the conservancies. And that has, has, had made, has, has made the conservancy very uh, difficult to attract investment as well as to attract donors because of the size of the conservancies. But at the same time, the people living in these conservancies are most vulnerable to the impact of climate change. As you can see, it's one of the driest areas in, our, in, in, in not only in Namibia but in Sub-Saharan Africa. And as well, you know, there's been little grants that has you know, flown into these conservancies because of the capacity, the size, etc. The EIF was quick to note that, uh, uh, Honorable Minister, that you know, we need to do something in this conservancy. Oh, I'm very excited. Because if I see the area, as I, as I grew up in this area, I could not expect something like this. But then on the other hand, we were thinking of producing for ourselves. And how should we produce for ourselves rather than to concentrate on the government food handouts? And that's why we came up with this idea, but I was a bit hesitant. That will this ever work out? But luckily, it went out. The road was, the road, it was really tough, but it went out. And really, I am really, really excited as I'm speaking now. My name is Steven. Steven Kavihea. Uh, ek is hier geboren in Tabib en mijn ouders is hier begraven en uh, van verlede jaar af wat ik begin met die tijd te werk. Rarig, die tijd het mijn leven gedraai, gechanged. Ik is baie gelukkig want ik heb niks werk gehad nie, ik heb niks gedoen nie, ik heb net bij mij is gewerkt. Wat ik nu hier werk gecreëerd, wat ik met die tijd gebegin het, zo so, uit mij bijna mijn leven, mijn leven gechanged. It's about 10 o'clock and it's the only time the, 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 the water is starting, starting to pump. So it means that the water level is very, very, very below. And the size and the depth of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the pump is about 15 meters, plus minus 15 meters and still no water. And that's the actual depth of the borehole itself, meaning that the people in Omiana will still struggle with water. The, the other water source we are having, it's, it's salty water. We are in the area around the Brandberg. The Brandberg is um, Daurus, and it gives the whole area the name Daurus um, constituency. And that is known for poor water quality. What we try to find is more regional fractures and faults in the granite where there might be better recharge and thus um, um, younger water that doesn't have the high um, salinity that most small um, fractures have. And you will see one of them behind me, it's this um, quartz um, within the um, fractured granite. That's the typical sign of it. We sighted one borehole here and a little bit further on we selected another alternative. Uh, if you want fresh water, I think this is the only option we've got um, fresher water than the rest. The biggest problem that, that face our conservancies is financial assistance and uh, transport. So you go get this, then we can manage to develop our conservancies. That's a big thing. It's a supporting agencies that we need.
Um, een dag als hy, as hy as hierdie droom misschien uh, waar hy gaan wees, sal onze gemeenschap daaruit kan leven, want ons sal, ah, dan in die, in die tentplan, die groene, ek bedoel, vir die mense, sy gebruik en paar wat ons sal gaan verkoop. Ek het baie, baie geluk gevoel en ek het self vir my gesê, ek het werk gekry en, uh, en nogal in my plek waar ek gebore, ek gaan nergens nie, uh, alles is hier so, ek kom net van huis af, net by die werk kom, begin my werk en dan sit om jylle gras uitgevat, hier so uitgedra, buiten kan doen. En ons het hier so gebegin met die kool geplan. Ons het die kool gebegin geplan, geplan en dit wat ons geplan het, hier was niks. Ons het elke plekkie op die geikie, ons het elke kool opgezet, opgezet. En ons het dit recht gekry, weer hier die kant gekom, hier was geen, geen groende plande wat daar was nie. Ons het gebegin met die koliander alles in geplan, Batanaat, die tomaties wat ons daarin gepland het en soos vandag, soos ek hier is, ai, ek, ek voel baie, baie mooi en ek voel baie gelukkig en ek voel ook vir my kinders dat ons nou, pa het nou werk gekry, ek gaan nie ver nie, ons is hier in die groende en ons is nog bezig om daarvoor en door nog skoon te maak, laat ons nog kan verder kan plant vir die toekomst, vir die kinders en vir die toekomst, vir die gemeenskap. What I would like to appreciate is the cooperation, willingness and the commitment from the Conservancy Committee as well as its members in terms of uh, moving this Conservancy forward. The commitment that is shown through this, this garden has been overwhelming to us that uh, we even regret for not giving you more money. So what we'll do from the ERF perspective is that we'll go back, speak to our donors and raise more grants so that we expand uh, this garden. You must have a sustainable income that communities then will be able to look at this as their income and not depend on outside or external support but with a project like this, and the intention is to expand it, because if you are doing well, there's no reason why you cannot expand this project. Having um, the market in the area, the lodges are many here, and uh, you too, you can, instead of go out and buy from the supermarket, your, there's all the vegetables are here. So we look into that as well and also see um, other uh, hot cut pro produce that we can produce here. Having this is now basic uh, uh, produce we have here, uh, veg vegetables we have here, you might also, in the end, identify some um, that you able to, especially the needs of the community here, uh, the lodges and so on, and your clientele base, you must maintain it because you must sustain the supply chain uh, in the, in the, that needs that requires management because you don't need to disappoint your clients otherwise they will go to others and that means you must be able to every day you must apply to your client and uh, as we we're, we're just discussing here that um, there's obviously a need to expand we thought it's enough for the community of 350 but we want this project and the other um, income streams and it's also resources to sustain the community. <coughs> I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all, especially our Symbolic Conservancy and their leadership and their supporting entities for a successful implementation of this project. Your cooperation has been observed and they recognize. I wish to thank you all and uh, wish you best to continue implement the implementation of this project. As I said, I'm very proud full for what EIF consultants, Jensen and Belinda did for us. 
because without them we could not get these grants. But really, as I'm seeing in the garden itself, we started to produce already. And in, even to give the first products to the community free of charge. Really, that was a good, good, good thing that I think it's something like manna falling from the heaven. And really, if I see, we can do more. This, is, this was just a beginning and there's still a long way to go. And I, 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 I feel that we will not be able to go and buy at the shops. We'll buy our own products, distribute our own products to the community and also to sell for ourselves and also to sell for the sustainability of the garden itself. So it's a good thing for the future generation because I think we did our part to build the foundation for the future generation.